Good morning. Welcome to our Savior Lutheran Church in Macomas. I'm Pastor David Wagner. We're so glad you're here. Please come in. Good morning and welcome to our Savior Lutheran Church of Nokomis. It's good that, you joining, that you're joining us today from wherever you're at. Um, and uh, if you are from some faraway country or some faraway state, that you will tune in and catch uh, what we're trying to do, which is to bring the word to you in this video format because our church is still closed. There will be a day, we don't know when, when we shall open our doors for worship when that day happens, we can assure you that we will have done all we can to make our sanctuary a place where you will feel safe. But we will hope to continue doing the videos so that even uh, after the services are being held in person, that there will be a way for you to tune in and catch the video uh, in case you do not feel like uh, coming into this place yet uh, as uh, the pandemic continues and goes forward. Welcome to All Saints Day. All of us are sharing in our faith because someone along our life's pathway told us the truth about Jesus and his love for us. So there have been many saints that uh, have been a part of our lives. When we think about it, certainly Sunday school teachers and youth group leaders, but Perhaps we have to really say, most likely, it's been our dad and mom who told us those stories and prayed with us. Whatever they did, they set us in a place where we believed it and we followed it and we're here today because of it. So let us give thanks for all of the uh, amazing saints who have come before us and who we still live with and are seeking to be ourselves, saints for the glory and the honor of Jesus, our Savior and Lord. Let us compose our hearts and our minds now for worship, and we'll in expect a, a prelude from Bobby that will um, halt our uh, rapidly moving minds and bring us into the presence of Jesus. Thank you. 
We join in the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God. Have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We're truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in on, on, newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in our sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Our gathering hymn today is Abide With Me, and we're going to sing just the first and the last verse, Abide With Me. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And Let us bow for the prayer of the day. Almighty God, you have knit your people together in one communion in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Grant us grace to follow your blessed saints in lives of faith and commitment and to know the inexpressible joys you have prepared for those who love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. At this time, we'll ask Tom McCarthy, who's our financial secretary, to come forward and to share a temple talk. I was one of seven children brought up in a family with only one breadwinner. You might say we were poor, but that would be a misstatement. You see, we had a roof over our heads, a car, and sometimes two, enough food on the table to satisfy our needs, clothes on our backs, even though they were hand-me-downs, and all the love one could ask for. As children, we would take the soda bottles back to the store and do odd jobs for the neighbors for spending money. Given this meager upbringing, we were still given a coin to put in our offering envelopes for the church if we did not have our own money. Time went on. I fell away from the church and went out on my own. 
I struggled to find purpose in my life as a young adult until our first child was born. As is the case with many of the families I know, my wife made sure that our children attended Sunday school on a regular basis. I continued to struggle. Then something happened in our lives that prompted me to seek God's forgiveness and understanding. It was at this time that I returned to the church. I believe the Holy Spirit came to me during this time and opened my eyes, heart, and wallet. I began to give regularly to the church, first out of guilt and then out of thanks and generosity. It seemed the more I gave, the more I had, and the more I could give. This brings to mind the following verse from 2 Corinthians 9, verses 6 through 8. Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to bless you abundantly, so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. This is the time for our stewardship appeal. You should have all received your stewardship packet by now. You will also be receiving a time and talent survey in the near future. Please take the time to prayerfully consider your contribution to our Savior and fill out and return the enclosed card and the survey when you get it. Remember, it helps us plan our budget for the ensuing year. And as an added bonus, you may find yourself blessed abundantly as I am. The first reading is from the book of Re Revelation. After this, I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne, and around the elders and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne, and worshiped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason they are before the throne of God, and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them, nor any scorching heat. Nor, for the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of the water of life. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from 1 John, the third chapter. To see, the, what, see what love the Father has given us, that we should be called the children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the, the world does not know us is that they did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What, he, what we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this, when he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Word of the Lord, word of life. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Court, the Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the fifth chapter. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who persecute for righteousness, for then you will, for your sake, inherit the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be found acceptable in your sight, O Lord, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Working with a group of Catholic chaplains in my years with hospice, I learned a lot about the Catholic understanding of saints. They introduced me to an app for my phone put out by the Franciscans. It's called Saints of the Day. You can go there and learn about those ancients and moderns as well who made the cut in that church's eye and became saints or at least blessed, just a level below sainthood. Quite a lot to learn when you read the lives of the martyrs and saints. If you should decide to download the app, it's free, and you can check what day is for what saint. Many were martyred for their faith. All were persecuted in some way. And if you check this out a day or two, you learn that both men and women, young and old, were declared to be saints. And each one of them, get this, each one of them you can pray to. That is to ask them special favors that you might uh, get their attention. And if they aren't too busy doing all the work of being a saint in heaven, you may have your favor granted. Catholics also observe All Saints Sunday when they seek to hold up more ordinary saints, much like we do. But we do have a vastly different understanding. We read about the lives of the saints and martyrs not to hit them up for a favor, but rather to grow in our own faith because we feel that all of us all of us are on our pathway from baptism on to our personal sainthood. Quite a contrast. We emulate, we pattern ourselves after them, but they are resting from their labors and are not our ticket to granting our requests. Our prayers are for Jesus, through whom we believe the Bible wishes us to bring all of our worries, our concerns, and our requests directly to the Good Shepherd. As saints, we trust in Jesus for his ears to be open to us, his heart ready, and his love for us all powerful. Through Jesus, we are saints on the pathway of life, each one of us, some of us walking that journey a little more admirably than others, certainly. But in this amazing understanding, it means that everyone who's come and gone and all of us who still name the name of Christ are in this work together. 
whether we suffered and died in the first or second century for our faith, or whether we today in the 21st century are called upon, challenged, to live out our faith in our journey as saints. We often need guidelines, however, some instructions, and so we turn, where? To the Bible. And on this All Saints Sunday, we go to what is called the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus has left the crowd behind and is speaking only to his closest followers. But we will find no simple list of instructions for his followers, no list of do's and don'ts, rather a catalog of blesseds. Maybe you thought that the word beatitude meant a list of be attitudes, the way you should think all the time, but not so. For his own closest flock, that's us. He tells a story about what makes for saintliness. Not a do this or don't do that. I've always been drawn to a song that picks up on the Beatitudes, written by, yes, a Catholic priest named John Michael Talbot about the blessings or Beatitudes in his contemporary hymn. His song is written about being comforted for all people on their journey of faith. No simple answers, no commandments, no moral injunctions. He writes, be not afraid. You shall cross the barren desert, but you shall not die of thirst. You shall wander far in safety, though you do not know the way. You shall speak your words in foreign lands, and they will understand. You shall see the face of God and live. Be not afraid. I go before you always. Come, follow me, and I will give you rest. The song continues, if you pass through raging waters in the sea, you shall not drown. If you walk amid the burning flames, you shall not be harmed. If you stand before the power of hell and death is at your side, know that I am with you through it all. Be not afraid. I go before you always. Come, follow me, and I will give you rest. And blessed are your poor, for the kingdom shall be theirs. Blessed are you that weep and mourn, for one day you shall laugh. And if wicked men insult and hate you all because of me, blessed, blessed are you. Be not afraid. I go before you always. Come, follow me, and I will give you rest. I learn so much when I go over the words of that contemporary Christian hymn. To follow Jesus is to help us in our own journey towards sainthood. We are afraid many times, and he says, come, follow me. In the Beatitudes, Jesus claims that the poor, the mournful, the meek, the hungry, the merciful, the pure in heart, the peaceful, and the persecuted, they are blessed. They are the fortunate ones, the lucky ones, the ones whose lives are aligned with the heart and character of God. They are the ones who enter heaven, experience comfort, inherit the earth, be filled, receive mercy, see God, and be called the children of God. Quite a lesson up on that mountaintop that day to his disciples. Do we believe it? Today we're challenged to look more carefully at who are the blessed ones, or we might say, who are the lucky ones? Maybe you have your own list of saintly people. I know that I have mine. One of them was my father who died when I was age 18. At his funeral, we sang, abide with me, Fast falls the eventide, the opening hymn we sang today. His example was greatly imperfect. I think perhaps he didn't always have the cleanest language 
in the world. But my dad believed that his kids were going to go on the right pathway. He ended up with two of his sons becoming pastors, one having a PhD in music education, one being a medical technologist, and one being a registered nurse. He didn't do too badly with the one life he was given. He was perhaps, along with my mom, the first saint that came along to guide and instruct and sometimes scold me into the right pathway. These saintly people are at my side just when I need them most, but not with simple advice, easy answers. They're people who were, are living with their feet firmly planted on this earth. They have aches and pains, and they have known suffering. It was not a pain-free life, these saints that I admire, but rather how they dealt with their pain, not as stoic, stiff upper lips, but with patience and hand up to the God who never left their side. The old expression, remember, don't be so heavenly good, heavenly minded that you're no earthly good. Well, that's not the saints that I look up to and remember in my life. They were indeed of great earthly good. And though they were heavenly minded at times, I watched what they did, not so much what they said. And I believe that many of them are right where they should be today on this All Saints Sunday, along with that vast army, that vast choir of angels who are singing. Very likely, you all have known people like this. Where are they when we need them? Full of judgment and accusation? No. But we needed them in the day-to-day -day of life, and they were there to do that. God wants us to know some real saints that we can grow into our sainthood watching them. Yes, you and me. God's normal, remember, is not the normal I see and experience in the world around me. I live in a world where the loudest, strongest, wealthiest, and most privileged people prey on the less fortunate. I live in a world where greed and selfishness pay big time, while meekness, mercy, mournfulness earn little more than contempt. But Jesus, in his wisdom, recognizes this disparity and addresses it in the very wording of the Beatitudes, blessed are, for they will receive. Jesus speaks to us through these ordinary people. They come into our lives, we don't know how. But they have proven themselves to have the good words from their good hearts that we need to make it from day to day. Pandemic? Yes. But who do we look for for strength? Those who have simple answers and easy solutions? Not me. I want to cast my lot with the ones who tell me the truth and have sympathy for the many who have lost loved ones or who experience separation and division due to the rules about not visiting our loved ones when they're sick. Could we say that the pandemic, pandemic has been a saint maker? strengthening our resolve, putting us in our own fear, guiding us and dealing with us so that we might understand in this difficult time what is the normal that our hearts seek. Learning about my neighbor's struggles brings me closer to my neighbor. I find my heart stretched and caring and yes, tearful at times because of what I know many of them have experienced. And we learn from the Sermon on the Mount about how blessings come not when we expect them, but in the midst of struggles. I wonder if this is why. The lectionary so wisely gives us Jesus' Sermon on the Mount on All Saints Day. As we remember and honor those who've gone before us and those who struggle yet today, we can come to celebrate the unbreakable communion between past, present, and future. We draw comfort, resilience, and hope from the fact that countless others have mourned, hungered, thirsted, 
and grieved in years past and gone on from their struggles to the fullness of life in God's presence. Religious scholar Tom Beach puts it this way, the saints provide a glimpse of God's already in the midst of our not yet. So perhaps today you are going to be the saint of the day, right there in the midst of the one life that you were asked to live. You may not have to go anywhere or do anything differently, but then again, who knows? Maybe there's a saintly example that you'll be called up to set for someone very close at hand. To be someone saint doesn't mean dressing any differently on the outside, but it may challenge you to change on the inside, right there in the middle of it all. There in the middle of your own pandemic. What are you being asked to do? God has blessings in store and forgiveness and a lot more as John Talbot, Catholic priest, wrote for us, be not afraid. I go before you always, come, follow me, and I will give you rest. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all human understanding, keep our hearts and our minds on Christ Jesus. going to be singing now uh, another song for this All Saints Day. It's called Amazing Grace. We're going to sing the first and the fifth verse. Listen to that last verse we're going to sing today. When we've been there 10,000 years, think about that perspective on life on All Saints Sunday. <laughs> using the Nicene Creed today on All Saints Sunday to listen to the fullness of this confession of our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of one being with the Father, to him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scripture. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and all those in need. Lord of all the saints, we praise you for 
evangelists, martyrs, whose sacrifices witness to your gospel across time and space. Inspire us by your courage to carry our faith to new people and places around us. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Lord of every place, the universe proclaims your greatness from generation to generation. Bless the work of naturalists, conservationists, and park rangers who train our attention to the wonders of the world you have made. Hear us, O God. Lord of every nation, guide this country, red states and blue states, rural voters and urban voters, young and old, as we share in another national election. Kindle hearts eager to understand our common needs and seek our common good. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Lord of every blessing, your son's blessing came to those living with poverty, grief, hunger, thirst, and persecution. Shape our vision of the saints to match his own. Awaken us to your call to serve all who suffer. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Lord of every venture, anoint us with the missionary spirit of the early church. Bless all new missions of our synod, empower testimony from new communities of faith to shape a diverse witness to your saving power. Hear us, O God. Lord of every time, countless are the multitudes you have called by name and gathered to yourself. Comfort us as we grieve those who have died in this past year, especially the members and friends of our Savior Church. And for those among our family and neighbors who we have lost, may our hearts find strength and courage in entrusting them into your tender care for now and eternity. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, until that day when you gather all creation around your throne, where you will reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us join in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Go forth into the world to serve God with gladness. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, help the afflicted, honor all people, love and serve God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. Our closing hymn is Rise Up, O Saints of God. We will sing the first and second verses. you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now
Now we'll receive the beautiful words and sounds of the postlude. Thank you. Thank you. 